Hello everyone watching and welcome to this very special Love Reading for Kids event. I'm Andrea Reese, and I'm one of the reviewing team for Love Reading. Um, and I am delighted to be introducing our guest today, Nikki Smithdale. Uh, Nikki's here to tell us about her new book, well her debut book, so congratulations, <laughs> Betty Steady and the Toad Witch, which is the story of the hero of Wobbly Rock, um, Betty Steady, and how she nearly becomes unstuck when she comes up against the Toad Witch. So um, the mistake Betty makes is to try and take on the witch single-handed and actually slightly underprepared. Um, but fortunately, she does get some help from Fig, who is an imp, um, from LMNOP, who is a, a trumpet-playing mouse, and Rupert Sometimes, who's an owl. So it's a terrific book. Congratulations. The technical term, I believe, is a hoot. Um, and it's <laughs> Have readers smiling so hard their cheeks could catch fire, which is a line I've pinched from the book, page 123, <laughs> to be precise. So, Nikki, we'd love it if you'd like to uh, read a bit from the book um, to set this up. But first, I'm going to introduce the real hosts of this, um, Henry and George. Both of you, I believe, are big readers, which is exactly the kind we like at Love Reading. Um, Henry, you like writing and illustrating stories as well, which is brilliant. Um, and I've also heard that you're both quite sporty. So you're good at judo, is that right? Yeah, brilliant. Um, and Henry, you did a triathlon, which is amazing. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> um, and George, I've heard that you're very good in the kitchen. So you like cooking and baking which is also brilliant. Gosh, we've got very accomplished young people <laughs> here with us today. So you've got some great questions for Nikki as well. So I'm going to um, hand over to you two to put those to her um, once Nikki um, has done a short reading, if that's okay. So yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank you so much. And it's lovely to meet you all. So this reading I'm gonna do from the book is from the very beginning of the book. Now, Betty Seddy, um, as you'll soon learn, is a very arrogant character who really thinks she can do everything all on her own. And she is the guardian of Wobbly Rock. So she's the person that helps to protect the castle. So this reading is from the start of the book when everybody in the castle has been waiting for her. Um, and you'll see what happens when she arrives back from a battle. The room went silent. Indeed, it was Betty Steady, but she looked proper rough. That blasted viper got me, Betty murmured, her face pale and smeared with mud. Hunched like a wilted spinach leaf, she steadied her tall frame on Simon Anderson's reins. Blood dripped down her chin and her wet brown curls clung to her cheeks like a gang of tired slugs. Betty, cried the king, are you hurt? Betty approached the throne, grimacing with each slow step. Forgive me, your majesty. She held out a shaking hand to the princesses. Oh, Pam and Pam, I have failed you, my friends. As she passed the second royal flag bearer, she stumbled. Johnny Logflume? She looked up and clutched his to tunic. I have disgraced your flag, Johnny Logflume. Johnny Logflume looked around awkwardly. Is she all right? Betty slid to the floor. The venom is taking hold. I can see spots. I can see into next pancake day. My goodness, cried Fig, rushing to her side. Where did it bite you? Fig, whispered Betty. Her voice wobbled like an uneven cafe table. Is that you? Come closer, dear imp. The imp clutched her hand. Don't give up, Betty. You can fight this. There's something I've always wanted to ask you. Betty leaned her head against Figs. Something important. Of course, great guardian, ask me anything. Fig's scrawny chest rattled wildly. Anything. As the crowd listened in flabbergasted disbelief, Betty let out a weak cough and looked the imp in the eyes. Would you? Her words were punctuated with shallow gasps. Would you please, please take my sword? She pulled the great weapon from her scabbard. Oh, Betty, 
Fig's eyes brimmed with tears. It would be my honour. Take it, little imp. Take it away. Betty cracked a smile. Clean off the snake slime, then give it a polish for me, will you? While I party my face off. The imp screwed up his forehead. Huh? Betty leapt to her feet, did three cartwheels and grabbed Johnny Logfream's flag. No one can defeat the guardian of Wobbly Rock! She waved the custard yellow flag high in the air and wiggled her hips. That viper didn't stand a chance. The king beamed. Well, tickle my belly with a fluffy duster. She did it. Brilliant. Well, that's fantastic. That's really set the scene. Um, OK, who's going to ask the first question? I believe it's George, with, which who has a key question for us. Once I write the story. Ah, oh, that's a good question, George. A very good question. Well, I've always loved fantasy stories um, with medieval castles and knights. But I also really like funny, very silly stories. So I thought I'd kind of combine the two. I also really love it in stories where a character has um, a really big power or something that's really strong about them, which I think at the start Betty does. Um, and then I find it really interesting when they lose that power and they have to then adapt and maybe change how they do things. Um, and as you well know, things do change for Betty later in the book. And I found it really interesting to see how she had to change herself and change her perspective. Um, but ultimately, I just really wanted to write a funny story and I find silly jokes, they make me laugh and I really enjoyed writing it. So that's why I wanted to write a funny book because I just thought I'd enjoy it. Excellent answer. It, did it make you two laugh? It certainly made me laugh a lot. Yeah, I think it did. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you for answering that. Right, next question. This is from Henry, I believe. So why was the code wet? Toad Witch so keen to take over Wobbly Rock? Thank you. That's Thank a you great mentioned. question. I loved writing the Toad Witch. She's so purely evil, but she's also kind of pathetic in some ways. So she, she's quite a bitter character. Um, so we find out a little bit about her history in the book when she tells Betty why she wants to take over the castle. So she tells her that um, she used to live in a castle when she was young and she used to have all the riches that everybody in Rob Wobbly Rock had. Um, but then her father lost everything and lost the castle because he gambled it away on a game of snakes and ladders, which sounds very silly. Um, but she, that's what she, why she wants it. She wants to get that life back. And she's tried before to attack Wobbly Rock, but Betty has stopped her. So that's why she comes up with the plan um, to trap Betty and to cast her magic spell on her to make things easier for her and her toad army to go and attack the castle. She's also got her, she's obviously got her son. So her son is called Nim and he is a very moody teenager. So whatever she does, however evil she is and how, however powerful she is, you always have Nim in the background moaning, oh, mum, you're so embarrassing. And I think that's a really funny part of her character. I have to say, as a parent, that really made me feel sorry <laughs> for her, <laughs> having Nim there. <laughs> so I thought that was particularly good. Uh, that's great. Thank you. That's yes. We've got all of her motivation now. Um, right. What's your next question, Henry? Because this is a very good one, too, I think. So actually, what happened to Betty's parents and were they as great a warrior as Betty? That's a great question, because you only find out a little bit, don't you, in the book about the parents? So um, her parents were great fighters, just like her. They were both knights. Um, and they died in battle when she was really little. Um, and we do have a few snapshots in the story of her memories of them. And the last thing they said to her was to tell her to um, that she needs a little help in life. So we have that nice memory of them. Um, 
But being a writer, I like to imagine a bit more about what happened in the history of the book without even putting it into the book. So in my mind, they went off into a, a battle when she was very young and they were fighting a three-eyed dribble dragon, which is a creature I do mention very briefly in the book. Um, but I may well come back to those creatures a bit later in the series um, because I really like the idea of a three-eyed dribble dragon. I'd love to describe it. But yeah, in the story, that's what happens. The parents, um, very sadly, go off and battle a dragon and they um, they die. So we don't see them in the story at all. It's quite tragic, but it's also good, I think, in, in a book if the parents are out of the way so it's a classic and thing you... in in children's books isn't it as yeah. lovely as it is to have the parents there they get in the way of all the <laughs> adventures the, the story you wouldn't take your <laughs> mum on an adventure would you Mom exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right brilliant question um henry what's your next one as well if betty was a male warrior would the story have gone any, any differently that is a really interesting question mm -hmm. i like that question I think that's really interesting yeah I think in my mind, Be Betty yeah. doesn't really fit with any particularly girly stereotypes. But then I don't really think there necessarily are any girly stereotypes. Um, because I think girls can be strong. They can be physically strong. They can be um, creative. They can be resilient. Um, they can be kind. So girls have lots of different strengths as well as boys. And I think Betty doesn't really fit in, into any particular boxes. She's her own person. Um, she's a complicated character. She's got her flaws, that's for sure. Um, but ultimately, she's a really kind person at heart and she learns how to be kind as the book goes on. So um, do I think it would be different with a male? I don't necessarily think so, because I think... Uh, if she was a male character, she would still have those complex traits and she would still be that same strong person. And that's a very good question. It is. That was an excellent question. Thanks for that one, Henry. And um, your next one is good as well, I think. What's your next question? Did you shrink Betty in size to make to her realise how others may feel who are smaller and not as strong? That's really good. Yeah, absolutely. At the start of the book... Betty is such a show off. She thinks she's absolutely amazing. Um, she's the strongest person in the castle and she thinks nobody can beat her. And actually she can't see the strengths that other characters have. So some of the other characters that are maybe smaller and not as strong, like Fig, for example, um, he's very good at planning. He, he loves his paperwork. And she thinks that everything he does is really boring and there's no point in doing it and completely dismisses it. Um, and I think throughout the book and b being really tiny, she sees things from a different perspective for the first time. And as the story goes on, it dawns on her that actually there are other strengths in life and there are other ways of getting things done and everything's equally important. So it's not just about having muscles and it's not just about sword fighting. Um, it's about thinking things through. It's about clever planning and it's about working together and teamwork as well um but yeah ultimately her life changes forever when she shrinks down everything's different and she sees the world from a completely different view fantastic i love the way that she comes around and she has to use um well fig's bum as we know it, <laughs> which is his bi-weekly unabridged memo i think that's it <laughs> that's jolly yeah, i did love writing that <laughs> I think that was excellent. Um, yeah, another really good question, Henry. So thank you for that one. And there's the next one I think is is very insightful too. So hit us with that one. Will Betty stay small forever or are you already planning another story where things may change for Betty? That's a great question. So when I finished the book, I wasn't sure if I was going to write a second one. But then I kept thinking about the characters and I didn't really want to leave them. And I thought, actually, I would love to write some more. So, yeah, there will be more in the series. So the next book is will be out next year, early next year. Um, and without giving away too many spoilers, it's quite hard because I want to tell you absolutely everything. <laughs> um, but yes, at the beginning of the book, the next book, she will still be small. 
Um, and obviously she's made friends with her little gang, the Crossword crew. So they, they're all spending time together, having a lovely time. Um, but there are different challenges coming up. And I think because she's such, she's been such a show off, she's been so arrogant. I think some of that is still there in her. And so when she gets challenged and when people maybe doubt that she's still a good fighter because they see her and they think she's so tiny, she can't possibly be a good fighter. Um, she takes that to heart and it dents her ego a little bit. Um, so part of her thinks, actually, do I want to be bigger again? And the next book explores about how maybe she could become bigger again um, and how magic might help her with that. Mm -hmm. um, and the title of the next book is called Betty Steady and the Queen's Orb. And mm -hmm. as I say, it's out early next year. Oh, are we the first person to people to hear that? that Maybe, sense. yeah. yeah. I hope I'm allowed to tell you that. I'm pretty sure I am. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the amazing illustrator Sarah Horn will be drawing up all the lovely yeah. pictures for that soon. Um, so, yeah, that will be early next year, which I'm really excited about. That's fantastic. That's really exciting. Good boys, did, do you like the illustrations in the book? Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she, because uh, one of you said you like illustrating, is that right? Is that Henry? You like drawing pictures. Great. Yeah. So Sarah Horn does the amazing illustrations. She's just so talented, isn't she's she? Terrific, and yeah. she's just added so many more details into the book, things that I wouldn't have even thought about. She's put in. And every time I look at even now, they all make me laugh with those little extra details she's added in. She's very clever. <laughs> have so boys, have you cut out the um the special <laughs> bag for Sig and attach them to the pictures because I wondered if anybody would do that because you you get to kick uh, to cut out his bum bags and attach them <laughs> so I thought when I wrote funny. that I did wonder whether anyone would do it so well I don't know maybe, I was quite maybe. tempted <laughs> what about you two will you do that or yeah, yeah well, we have yeah, yeah. excellent Fantastic. I really liked what you were saying um, about having the extra character who didn't make it into this book. So are there other people that you had to kind of drop out of this story that that might be able to come back in the future? Are you thinking like that? Yeah. I mean, there are so many small characters as well in this book that have maybe just a few lines. But in my mind, I've imagined their whole life. So <laughs> I've tried to give everyone their little bit of limelight in the books coming up. But um yeah, I could I, I could easily write so many books and focus on a different person each time because as a writer, you can't help but just imagine the whole world and fill in all those gaps. Uh, but yeah, you will see some of the smaller characters get more of a role in the next book as well. Excellent, excellent. That's quite good because I think that, bring, that brings us on to, um, it's George's question as well about, um, what's your, your question next? <laughs> What advice can you give to young people like us to be a great writer like you? Thank you. That's a great question. And I think, well, my journey as a writer has been a really long one. So when I was your age at school, uh, I did re I was very creative. So I was always coming up with stories. I loved putting on plays for my mum and dad and I was always making up something I was kind of in my own little dream world half the time um but actually when it came to writing itself I wasn't the best in the class um my handwriting wasn't always that great <laughs> my spelling wasn't always that great um but I always had those ideas so my teachers always says I was very creative but I just needed to practice a bit more. And that's what I've done over the years. So I think writing is all about practicing. The more you do it, the better you're going to be. Um, I So in my books, I have a lot of um, jokes and wordplay and some poetry as well coming up in the next books. Um, and with that sort of writing, you have to you, you do it quite slowly. So I what I tend to do is write a little bit and then I go back and I edit it really carefully. I might read it out loud to myself and think, oh, how does that sound? What might I change to make it sound better? Um, so really, I think I'm a bit of a slow writer compared to other writers. Um, I would all, also say, if you are looking to be a writer, to read as much as possible. And it sounds like you two are really good readers, which is fantastic. Um, 
and read in different genres as well. So you you might be reading comic books, graphic novels, you might be reading funny fantasy books like Betty Steady, or you might be reading very serious drama books, or you might like scary stories. There's so many different types of stories out there. And I think to be a great writer, it's really good to read different genres of book um, and get to know lots of different styles of writing. And that can really help with your writing too. Uh, but ultimately, I think the main thing is to have fun with your writing. If you're not enjoying it, it's probably not going to be the best writing. With Betty Steady, I made sure that I enjoyed every step of it. Um, and because of that, it's it's the one book that I had published. So it's my first book that I, that's being published. Um, in the past, I've tried to write other books and they weren't quite, quite in my unique voice. And I think... Um, I was trying to write serious fantasy stories and when I read it back to myself I thought that doesn't quite sound like me and when I let myself just write in my own voice and to use those silly jokes that I really liked that's when my writing came to life a little bit more. Um, so I think really it's about finding your unique voice, playing around with it um, Embracing failure, so if it goes wrong, if you don't like something, it doesn't matter, you know you can edit it and keep trying. Um, but really it's about really leaning into who you are and what you find exciting or what you find funny. Great. Does that help you? Do you think with that, both of you? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And now that you've read Betty Steady, are you inspired to go and write funny fantasy stories with lots of... Yeah. Yeah. Um, extraordinary people and characters in them because that would be that good. Would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could tell us what you two like most about the book and like if you were going to recommend it to a friend what would you say? You must read this because what would you say? I'd say that it's really funny but yeah. it sometimes can be like serious at times so um, yeah it's a mix. Perfect, I think. I think that sums it up really well. Yeah, because it is funny, but it's also a really good adventure. Like, we do want to know what happens, and we are quite worried that maybe Betty won't win out in the end. So um, <laughs> that's a, a brilliant bit of storytelling. Yeah, that's, that's, really great. It too. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, I must admit, I was quite intrigued by your um, alter ego writing voice in the book. Which is, <laughs> um, the other author who's occasionally... Um, Salvador Catflap. Exactly. <laughs> and um, whether you will ever write The Enchanted Boiled Egg and the Nice Rainbow. Because I would love to. Someone love has asked lost. me this before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I haven't actually, but I would really like to. Yeah. I think maybe that's my next writing project. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really liked writing. He's kind of the narrator of the story yeah. and he sets the scene for Wobbly Rock in a way and kind of tells us a bit about the history of it. Um and I like that he kind of comments on the story as well. Um, and the, in the books coming up, you'll see more of him. Oh. Lots of silliness coming up from Salvador Catlap in the next books as well. Um, but yeah, I really, I, I quite liked that because it could kind of take you out of the story a little bit um, and kind of comment on what has happened. So he's kind of with the readers, if that makes sense. And you're kind of seeing the story through his eyes. You're watching it together. So did you did you have a favourite character in the book, boys? Uh, I think I really like uh, Betty. I really like the Toad Witch. Did, did you? you? She's the did you think she was scary? <laughs> <laughs> she's funny, though. <laughs> I like the Toad Witch. I like the fact that Betty's um, muscles um, have names or her biceps have <laughs> names. I think that's very good. I was quite taken with them. <laughs> Linda and Greg. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. Do you know a Linda and Greg? Yeah, I thought, you know what, I thought she's got these enormously powerful muscles <laughs> and I just thought it'd be really funny to give them some just really normal names. <laughs> that just really made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favourite character from the book is Simon Anderson, the horse. The horse. So he's, um, he's, he's Betty's handsome horse and he wears tiger print cycling shorts and he's very handsome and dashing um and I, I absolutely love writing for him he makes me laugh it's terrible when he runs away and leaves her though yeah <laughs> I know 
that was no shock. loyalty there <laughs> i know i was quite upset at that bit i thought no simon anderson you should you should have stayed i know <laughs> It's yeah. very funny. Oh, no, this is going to get to the point in the interview where I just start telling you all the bits that I really like that made me laugh. Not <laughs> right, I love that. Here all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, boys, have you got other questions? Do you feel you feel inspired now? And I think that was really interesting, your questions, because they have told us lots about the process that went into creating the book and the ideas and how you developed them. And Absolutely. They were really good questions. So well done. Yeah. And I always really like finding out what bits of authors have taken out of books I think that's that's really good and yeah and then, absolutely yeah. it's yeah often it's about what you don't put in isn't it yeah, exactly yeah yeah and lots about the um yeah the creative process so are you two definitely going to write stories now as well I think that would be yeah. great yeah super cool right well, we've got two more minutes if anyone has a question if not um I think we can um yeah I really like the way that yeah. Simon Anderson was illustrated and drawn. Absolutely. Yeah, Sarah Horn is just amazing. Because <laughs> you, as a writer, you have a picture in your head of what a character looks like. And then it's kind of out of your hands. When someone else is illustrating it, you think, oh, are they going to have a different vision to me? Is it going to be completely different to what I've imagined? Um, but as soon as I saw the picture, I was just so pleased. And Simon Anderson is the one um, that I, I just howled with laughter when I saw him. There's the picture of him where he is sitting up on the chair and he's eating his food. He sat up right like that. In fact, I'll show you it. Um, it just really makes me laugh so much. Is it that one? Oh, you found it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's definitely that one. Yeah, he just looks, I mean, he looks incredibly handsome and pleased with himself, doesn't he? Yeah. He does. <laughs> I really like that picture. I think um, having read the book, I might um, uh, take to saying I'm going to be as confident as a, as a room full of people of disco um, <laughs> dancers wearing leather trousers. I think that is... A brilliant line that we can all use as well. I know. Next time I yes. go to something I'm worried about, I shall imagine myself in my Absolutely. leather trousers. Absolutely. <laughs> so I feel I feel like I wrote Betty because I wanted to be more confident. And I feel like she is kind of my alter ego that I could have been if I had yeah. been this amazing, confident person. <laughs> She's almost who I want to be, really. Yes. <laughs> she just oozes confidence. She does. She's fantastic for that, isn't she? <laughs> Also, I like the way that crossword, being able to do a crossword um, helps because I think oh, you know, yes, people absolutely. who do crosswords I love a crossword. are also heroic. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's all sorts of people who get to, to take the limelight in this book. Yeah, there are different types of skills, aren't there? So it's not just about being strong, it's about yeah. being clever too. Yeah. And and being well organised, which, yes, absolutely. it's an important skill. The importance of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> got to have the paperwork there <laughs> <laughs> but the best thing really is to be able to wield a sword um, Abs yeah yeah I mean that's the fun like bit Betty does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that was brilliant thank you all very much indeed um, thank you so much it's been lovely but we can't wait for next book give us the Yay! title again the queen's it's, orb um Betty Steady and the queen's orb fantastic and that's spring next year so we can be waiting yes. for that um, and you can go and tell all your friends that you know what the title of the next Betty Steady um, book is before anyone else, which is really exciting. <laughs> and we're really pleased that Simon Anderson will be back in that. Oh, well. yes, he will yes. be back <laughs> with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all very much indeed. Um, can we give um, a round of applause um, to Nikki, I think? We can do it like that. Thank you. And to you two for your excellent questions. All right, so I'm going to, um, yes, turn off the recording. So thank you all again. Thank you excellent. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hang on. Bye.